we're here at the start of the second round and we do have a couple of the slave catchers that are within just two spaces here the purple one and then the brown slave catcher is three away here so there's a chance somebody could get caught trying to escape right now hopefully that doesn't happen we want to try and keep them away from them but we have to roll the dice and see what happens want to stay away from the purple and the brown and we got orange and it's three white arrows that's dangerous it's not as dangerous right now as I initially thought because the white arrows on the orange path cause the slave catcher to move to the north which doesn't put us in danger of being caught right now but it is a choke point where three paths come into one for an escape into Canada so he's blocking our path to get up there right now so we're going to want to move down here in the south to draw his attention back away so we can open this path up for these slaves to escape into Canada our stockholder is up first and we're in the planning phase now and he already has one token and he can gain two more during the planning phase and he has that one time special ability to spend three tokens during the action phase does he lose anything let's see one dollar or once per action phase purchase a token wow actually it goes up from one dollar to two dollars so using that ability actually increases the amount of money that the stockholder gets each turn interesting I don't think I'm going to do that right now because I want to, well, I do want to purchase the next support token so we can move into the next time period. Our agent has eight, so we only need to gain a couple more and we could use him and purchase the Lane Theological Seminary because it allows us to purchase a token at a two dollar discount which would be a one dollar discount because we have to spend a dollar for that so he would only need two more in order to purchase that card and then well actually one more would give him enough to purchase that card and then get the support token at a two dollar discount so one more in funding so we should be able to get that support token but will I be able to gain another support token if I get a fundraising action who that's tough because right now we only have one conductor token left the gray ones don't get discarded when they're used so when I use it it will go back onto the board here the gray ones are always available after their use unlike the rest of them that are discarded okay I have some choices I need to make and instead of talking about it for the next couple of minutes I'm gonna pause and make some decisions okay I think I'm ready I also have to remember that the gag rules are still in place where I can purchase only one token during the planning phase which doesn't hurt us right now because there are only two tokens here which that means I can have each player purchase one for the stockholder I'm gonna have him get the fundraising token because he already has one conductor token and hopefully I'm gonna move a couple more of the slaves off the plantations onto these green spaces so when I use his fundraising token I'll gain even more support that way he'll be ready with enough money to purchase a support token in the next round and we can keep going the agent will purchase that 
conductor token or should I have him lay off and save the two dollars? Yes, I will purchase that token for two for the agent and my thought process is that I can move three slaves one and then with his special ability on his roll card I can move two slaves one so with five movement I should be able to gain those two dollars back plus he's going to get the one during the action phase that will give us enough money to do everything we want to do and purchase the support tokens. Now we're ready to move into the action phase starting with the stockholder. He's going to get one dollar. I'll put it over on this side where there's a little bit more room. And I want to make some moves to maximize the amount of money I get from my fundraising action. I'll spend my conductor token. I'm going to move one which will attract attention of the yellow slave catcher and then I'll move two and three. I will use the stockholders fundraising token and now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That worked out great. So it's going to give us nine. Wow. That really, really is a good amount of support. And once per action phase, purchase a token after taking a fundraising action and I have enough money to do that now. I have 10 here. So this worked out better than I thought. So I'll purchase that token, spend all 10 to get the final support token from the time period we're in. And now, oh, before I do that, I noticed that moving onto this space is the end of the yellow slave catcher trail so it would have gained his attention again and moved him a little bit closer to us. When you purchase the last support token from a time period the abolitionist cards that are in that time period are immediately removed from the game and any cards that need to be drawn will come from the new active time period. Any cards that were already in place before this went away, those do stay. Our stockholder does not have any more money, so there's nothing else we can do with him. He used two tokens, he used the ability on his card, his roll card. Can't purchase anything from here because we don't have any money. We're not going to use his special one time ability. And that's all we're going to do with him. We're going to move over here to the agent for the agent's action phase. And now these are active, so these can be purchased immediately as soon as the new time period becomes active. And I almost... Oh no, that was... Never mind, I was thinking I spent the gray token and discarded it, but it's here with the agent. And now it is the agent's turn. He'll gain one for his ability on his roll card. And now he can move two slaves one space each for his roll card ability. I'm going to move from Tennessee into the Kentucky, Kentucky, Virginia area and that will attract this orange slave catcher, bring him a little bit further down towards the south and moving into that city gives the agent another dollar in revenue. Now we want to make one more move that's going to give us a dollar. That way he has enough to purchase this card and we can get another support token. I'll move out of Missouri into Iowa. That will give me 
another dollar, gain the attention of the blue slave catcher, and that's also the end of the purple trail, which is going to bring that slave catcher one step closer to us too. We got a pretty large concentration of them here. So we're going to have to, if we're going to move them over to the west, we'll have to go up through the east to escape. I'll purchase the Lane Theological Seminary for one. And we can move two slaves, one space each, or purchase a token at a $2 discount. Very nice. We made our purchase for one. We'll discard that. And we can buy a token at a $2 discount. So we will spend all eight that the agent has, gain another support token. We're doing pretty good. There's two left there, two left there. So we're halfway there. Well, not quite halfway, but can't buy half a token, so we're almost there. I will use my gray conductor token, which will go back onto the board. And I can move three individuals one space. I'm going to move out of Ripley here into that space, which will help draw the purple our direction. And that's going to gain us another dollar. We want to draw this orange away so we can move up to the north. And I could do that by moving into Ripley. If I move there, it's going to bring close again, but if I move here, it's going to bring the brown slave catcher token into Washington, D.C., but that'll open up the shipping route quite well. I don't think I want to move them both down here, though, so I'll move into Ripley, draw him a little bit closer. That will gain me an additional dollar. And we can move closer to Canada. That'll bring the orange back up here to Chicago. And that's going to give us another dollar. So gain some of the money back that we had spent. That appears to be all that we can do during this action phase, which will take us into the slave market phase, which means these seven slaves will be moved onto the plantations, but at least it means we have a five for the next slave market phase. I chose to put three, one, and three on the plantations. Now we need to draw our next card. And that's going to be another with five slaves on it. Now we move into the lantern phase. The two cards that are in this location will get discarded. Everything will move down. We didn't have enough additional funds to purchase the gag rules, but I was more excited about getting those support tokens already. So we'll draw two new cards. And it is another opposition card. But there can only be one opposition card out, so that'll get placed to the side for now. Here's one of the reserve cards.
At the beginning of the action phase, discard this card to switch positions of two abolitionist cards in the queue. Play from your reserve. That can be very useful. And Henry Box Brown. Move one slave from any plantation to a large northern city with no effect. That's a huge move. But you also get no effect, which means you wouldn't gain any money, but still it doesn't attract the attention of the slave catchers. This one that got placed off to the side will now get shuffled back into the deck. There can only be one opposition card out at any given time, but that one is going to be leaving after the end of our next round. So there'll be room for another one, unfortunately. Our lead player token passes to the agent, who will go first in the next round. And unfortunately, since we didn't get rid of the gag rules, we're only going to be able to purchase one token during the planning phase again. At the start of this round, we have a lot, or all, of our slave catchers are right close to the north-south border, so there's a higher probability that somebody may get captured or hopefully if they if they move maybe they'll just pass over them instead of ending in a space and we won't have somebody captured and sent back to the slave market see what fate has in store for our escaped slaves and we have the blue moving in the white arrow direction one time well, nobody gets captured, but it does block that passage there. And we can't move here because as soon as we move here, it's going to gain his attention and we would get captured. You can move to a space and get captured on purpose in order to free up or attract the attention and pull the slave catcher away. That's a... Uh, Horrible thought that you'd have to sacrifice somebody to do that, but I'm going to try to avoid doing anything like that and keep everybody as safe as possible, but hopefully it doesn't come down to something like that. We're ready for the agent to do his planning phase. I can only get one token. I have three dollars. I can still purchase this one for two, but these cost three, but they offer more choices because we have moving four, one, or two, two spaces. I think what I'll do is I will spend just two and purchase the gray token for two to move three, one each because with his roll card he can move two, one each also during the action phase. So he can still move five and we need to make sure that we make enough room on the plantation for any slaves that will be coming from the slave market also because we don't want to lose any. So I think that's a smart choice to take that one because we want to be able to move as many as possible. And we have this one here that's going to be moving into Canada so we're going to have another slave that escaped and got free and probably want to purchase one of these cards, especially the gag rules. Well, it's going to go away anyway. I could purchase the uh, John Greenleaf Whittier instead. Or if I make a little bit of revenue, it might open up some of these other ones. But I can only purchase one, and so we'll have the stockholder. Stockholder can't purchase any. But, because he doesn't have any money, but the support tokens don't cost anything. So, he'll take one of those. That way he can make himself some more. And if we have enough on the green spaces, maybe we'll be able to pull off another uh, purchase of a support token 
all in one round. We're here in our action phase with the agent who will gain one and I forgot about that. Gaining one darn I could have went ahead and but that's okay. Not worried about what I could have done. He can move two slaves one space each. We're definitely going to move this one into Canada to safety. And for my second movement I'm going to pay a dollar which is here on the board you pay a dollar for the the fee to get on the ship and we're going to send the slave out of Charleston and start using our eastern sea route. I'll use my token which will go back on the board and I'm going to move into Boston. Again I can move that one again because it's a different token now and moving into Boston is going to gain me two dollars in revenue draw this brown slave catcher back to New York which frees up Washington DC but if I go to Washington DC the purple one is going to come down here and capture that slave. I have two moves left I need to free up space on these plantations so we'll move out of this plantation over to Charleston and out of the Alabama plantation into Tennessee. That frees up four spaces now. We still have five there on the next slave market. He's out of moves, but we can purchase a card now, and he has enough money to go after some of these cards. And let's see. I could spend two, then each player receives two from the bank. That would only help out the stockholder. Could get the reserve card. At the beginning of the action phase, discard this card to switch two positions, or switch the positions of two abolitionist cards in the queue. Or Henry Box Brown, move one slave from any plantation to a large northern city with no effect. The only large northern city available would be Boston. I could move somebody from the plantation to there and that would free up another spot and then we would have five available. Yes, I'm going to go that route. I'm going to spend the three to purchase Henry Box Brown. Move one slave from any plantation to a large northern city with no effect. I will not gain the money but it will also not draw the slave catcher so I'll take from the plantation and go to Boston which we can have up to four in the large city so we're okay there and that solves our problem of having enough room here plus now we have two slaves in Boston that can start making their move to get up north and if they make that move to go north they're going to draw the blue slave catcher back to the east and possibly the yellow if they move a couple of times back to the east so it'll open up our western corridor again as they're escaping. Our stockholder is going to get one to start his action phase and if we use his support I mean his fundraising token it would gain him one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Ripley is not green, so seven, that would give him eight. That's not enough to purchase. It may not be enough to purchase the support token, but again, it's going to give him seven, which would set us up for the next turn. Once per action phase, purchase a token after taking a fundraising action. But I could purchase one of these tokens and move some people, gain more money, and be really ready for the next time around. Let me consider that. That's I didn't think of that. I will spend... I can spend three...
to purchase that conductor token to be able to move four one space each and I only used one token so I can use another one again yeah so once per action phase purchase a token after using a fundraising action okay so I only had the one token now I'll use my second token which is move four one each I'm gonna move both of the slaves in Boston to this spot here so that's gonna use up two of my moves and I'll gain uh, I'm not thinking because I can only move one there because it's a small spot so only one will move and that will draw the blue over to the east gain me a dollar so I have three more moves left three more moves left I could draw the purple this direction. I can't go here yet because the blue is still there. There's no real way for me to draw the blue. I could draw the brown and the orange away. And if I move there, that'll draw the brown slave catcher down and the orange over. Now I have two moves left. I'll spend one of the stockholders dollars to continue to use my eastern sea corridor and then I could draw the purple over. Maybe I'll go here. I'll bring him over to Newport, and that would essentially though block all of our paths through the middle of the country. I have to find a way to draw this blue one over so I can go up west. But I need to get closer. All right. So I will. Yeah. I'll move into Missouri, drawing the purple slave catcher over, and hopefully during the next phase one of them will move away and give us a little bit of breathing room. Or we may get into one of those terrible situations where we have to make a tough decision and move somebody into harm's way on purpose. And I'll spend two. to purchase the Kansas-Nebraska Act Reserve card. At the beginning of the action phase, discard this card to switch positions of two abolitionist cards in the queue. So we'll have that reserve card available. And I'll put it off to the side also so we can see it. And I think that's all we have for our action phase. We paid our two tokens. We bought a card. We used the roll card, I'm not going to use his one-time use. I don't have three tokens to spend. Now we'll move into the slave market phase. And we have just enough space available for the five that are coming from that market. Move these two down. Draw our next one, which is another seven. This may be the time to use the agent's one-time use during this next planning phase. I think it's going to be very difficult to move enough slaves, get enough of them escape from these plantations to accommodate what's going to come from the market, which means we're probably going to end up putting some lost slaves on our card, which I don't like doing. So I'll see what I can do to mitigate that or keep it from happening but we don't have a lot of revenue to start out so things are not looking too good these two cards here at the lantern phase will come off and we're going to get four new ones now first we have 
Anthony Burns. Move one slave from a large northern city directly to Canada. That's a good one. Now we have the John Price Rescue. Move one slave from any small northern space directly to Canada. Wow. A couple of really good cards that are helping us move directly into Canada, which is what we need. Uncle Tom's Cabin. Purchase a token at a $3 discount and swap the places of two cards in the Abolitionist queue. Getting a lot of really useful cards. And finally, and luckily, no opposition cards. We have Oberlin, Ohio. Move four slaves a single space or purchase a token at a $4 discount. Well, maybe we will use our stockholders reserve card to swap places for that card down here to the one and then we could buy a support token at a $4 discount. We'll move the lantern over to the stockholder who will go first in our next turn. Things are really tough here in the central part of the country. There are no paths to freedom right now, but we do have a pretty good stream of slaves escaping along the coast and using the ships, so we should be able to get them to safety. Plus we have these couple of great directly to Canada cards, one from a large northern city, which we could use for Boston. That'll save us a couple of moves. And then we have one from a small northern space. The only one on a small northern space is right there. So it's tempting to use that, or use both of these, which we can only use one with each player. And then Oberlin, Ohio, the $4 discount would slide down at the end of the next turn and become much more cost effective. And then we even have the each player receives $2 from the bank down here in the one dollar space so we got a lot of really good cards but we have to decide how we're going to use them make sure we do it smartly we definitely want to buy this one so it doesn't go away so most likely we'll move that slave from Boston directly into Canada through the purchase of that card and then we'll figure out what we're going to do here and we also have to remember we can swap two of these around with the Kansas Nebraska Act